Hello everyone, this is Dr. Marrero from Math Topics. Welcome to this video. This video is about how can we establish connections in mathematics. Um, as I said before in our series about how do I learn math and how do I teach math, making connections um, makes the life of the learner better and the students or whoever is learning mathematics is going to start thinking in the right direction in a very effective way. So our mission as a teacher in order to avoid frustration, in order to avoid that phrase that many learners say, it's, I am not good at math, in order to avoid frustration and I start moving forward to learn mathematics, we have the mission to teach math in a way that engage the students, but at the same time makes sense for them. And this is about connections. For example, arithmetic sequence. You have one of those sequences right there in front of your screen. Negative 30, negative 39, negative 48. This is a beautiful opportunity to connect arithmetic sequences with linear functions in class. For example, you can teach uh, that this sequence is subtracting 9. You can see it because that is uh, basically what is called in arithmetic sequence um, what is called in, in arithmetic sequences the common difference D that you subtract two consecutive numbers negative 39 minus uh, negative 30 and this is negative 39 plus 30, okay, which is equal to negative 9. So the common difference is negative 9. And the students learn the explicit formula for arithmetic sequences. And they also learn the, the recursive form. So they, they you can teach them, okay, this is a sequence a sub n. And the first element of the sequence is negative 30. Um, and then we use the common difference, which is minus 9 times n minus 1. And this is this is the explicit, this is the explicit formula. Okay, this is the explicit formula of the arithmetic sequence. Okay. But this is the time in the the teacher can have the opportunity to connect with in some way with linear functions. Uh, and it's important to understand that the data, and we're going to explain that later, the data of explicit sequences is a discrete data. And the data from a linear function is a continuous data. But even that big difference, we have to find similarity to establish connections. For example, if you continue working this expression, you can get the distributive property right here and you get negative 9n and you multiply negative 9 times negative 1, which is positive 9. Okay? And then you combine like terms and you have here negative 9n, negative 30 plus, plus uh, 9 is subtracting and we keep the number with the highest actual value, which is negative 21. And we finish here. I know the data here is is about um, discrete values, okay? Because we have boxes right here, and we can have okay, we have boxes right here. We can have negative thirty, negative thirty nine, negative forty eight, and so on. No, by subtracting nine, we 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 reveals the rest of the sequ the sequ the rest of the terms of the sequence. But I want to take the opportunity to find similarities in terms of a structure. So what about y equal mx plus v? What about that this is the rate? What about that these two structures are very similar? We have a variable, we have a coefficient for that variable, and we also we have negative 21, a constant number. What about that? Is this a 
something that we can we can discuss in the classroom and they can see the relation in between the structures the similarity between the structure and how can we see that the m is the slope in linear function continuous functions and is the rate but it's also the rate of this sequence is going by subtracting 9 and if you represent that negative 9 minus 21 in terms of sequence you will see points that are going down because that rate is negative and that is slope is negative of course if we move this which is a total totally different perspective we can put y equals negative 9 minus 21 i know this is a continuous function i know that the rate of slope is negative 9 but it's also the line is going down is decreasing so the idea of, of teaching this way is to find similarities between different topics find similarity between connections between similar topics and then of course you dive into a more sophisticated analysis for example you can say i don't know when the relation is discrete when the relation is not discrete when the relation is a continuous function this is what is next but it's important to to have that that link between um, different topics in mathematics arithmetic sequences and linear functions discrete data and continuous data rate of change over here and common difference over here what do you think now you can you can you can talk you can extend the conversation we talk about the similarities we talk about the rate of change we talk about the common difference we transform the structure of the explicit form of the arithmetic sequence into this the slope intercept form y equal mx plus b we we we, we, we work with similarities to establish connections and then we move to differences and we move the level of complexity and understanding and you can see right there on the board and you can you can see it right now the representation of one arithmetic sequence the graph is disconnected so this is a discrete data and look at the domain the domain in my sequence the previous sequence is negative 30 negative 39 negative 48 is a subset of the whole numbers look at the difference and now you start talking about you start talking about number sense which is an important field in mathematics the number theory okay how much you need to know about number sense and, and the learner is start understanding number sense because you start talking about that domain what is the domain of the arithmetic sequence? It's, it's a subset of the whole numbers. But we don't have that when we have linear functions. Okay, look at this example. Discrete additive, you are adding or subtracting the same value. Okay, the common difference, the, the slope or the rate of change continues is a linear function discrete is the arithmetic metric sequence is related with exponential functions but instead of adding or subtracting the same value we are multiplying by the same or dividing by the same and now we start talking about similarities and differences but the most important thing the connections and now you can see here linear function that's a linear function the graph is connected it's continuous the domain is a subset of real numbers in this particular case it's a subset of the real numbers because we have a very defined uh, domain from negative 2 to infinity so we are not taking the whole thing but the graph is connected and as soon as the graph is connected it's a, li it's, 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 it's a continuous function and we, we can we can compare the two graphs we can compare the discrete disconnected we can compare the domain of the sequence which is is a subset of a of the whole number system and we can compare with a continuous graph that is a subset of something bigger something connected something continuous 
the real number system. This is more or less, and I would like that you, you write your comments below. I always welcome every comment that the viewers, they, 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 they have ideas to put here into this conversation. I always love that. And I try to have a community of learning. That's one of the main objectives of math topics. But the, the central idea of this video is how can we engage the students? How can we stop the frustration learning mathematics? Find ways to stop that frustration and start engaging the class and start making the possibility of learning and learning with rigor, okay? Continuous graph. The graph is connected. Domain, subset of the real number. Similarity between arithmetic sequences and linear functions. Connections between geometric sequence and exponential function. Talking about the common difference, addition, subtracting the same value. Talking about the rate of change. Multiplicative. Multiply by the same value or divide by the same value, the common ratio. And when they, when they listen, the common ratio, they, they, their mind moves to fractions. So this is the conversation today. And look at what they said right there. The graph is a set of discrete points. Its domain can be described as a subset of the whole numbers. For every unit that X increases, the Y value grows or declines by repeated addition. As a result, the graph can be best can best be said to represent an arithmetic sequence because this is the big difference. Well, another big difference. So in a in an arithmetic sequence we I compare that with a boxes. Empty boxes and we put no values into the box. But this one will be the first box. And what value will be in the first box? A sub one. What value will be in the second box? A sub 2. And then we talk about structures and then we talk about vocabulary and we talk about the entire world of sequences. But always moving back and forth between continuous graph, connected graph, disconnected graph, discrete data, domain, subset of one particular system of numbers, and subset or another particular um, system of numbers. This is the conversation today, and I hope that you like it. If you like it, give us a like. Helps Math Topics. Join Math Topics for more resources. That's what I have today. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy the time. Write your comments. I know I have a huge community of math lovers that they like to, to share their ideas. See you in the next video. Thank you.